Hey, Breaking Brown family, what's going on? It's Yvette Carnell. I just want to come to you real quick. I'm not going to take most of your time. I'm not going to take maybe even five minutes is all I want to do right now, five minutes, so that we can have a conversation or or have the conversation in the comment section about something that happened today. I'm watching TV, and I realize they break in the news, and they tell me Steve Bannon is gone. He's out. And I know that this is going to happen. I expected this. It's been in the coming for a long time. He's had one foot in, one foot out for a long time. But I understand how they'd use Charlottesville to kind of get him all the way out and to kind of lay all the racists on him. And I know some people say, oh, Yvette, you know, he was in charge of Breitbart. He was in charge of this right-wing media organization. And and so what? what's the problem? Shouldn't we be cheering? No. We, we most certainly should not be cheering. Steve Bannon was the best thing in that White House. Just sit around and absorb that Steve Bannon was the best thing in that White House. And let me tell you why. Number one, number one in terms of why he was the best thing in that White House is that he kept fights going on. Steve Bannon and Reince Priebus, Steve Bannon and, 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 and supposedly him getting in it with Kushner, Steve Bannon and Trump, he had all this friction going on, so much so, so much friction, that he, they couldn't get anything done. And it wasn't just him, I'm not saying it was just him, but he was the ideological Like Steve Bannon was the ideological force, the ideological spine behind this White House. So I don't, I don't understand what anybody means. With him gone, there is no ideology. You just have efficient republicanism. You have efficient. The last thing you want for the Trump White House in terms of what they've been proposing in terms of Medicaid for black people and all, the, and, and all those cuts to HUD, cut to Medicaid, cut to Medicaid, cut. The last thing you want them to be is efficient. We have gotten to this place right now where the Trump White House hasn't gotten anything done. It's almost September, and they've got nothing done. That's not a bad thing. And part of that has to do with Bannon. Now, let me tell you one other thing. There's one other issue. Bannon was an economic populist. When I talk about immigration and how immigration impacts the African-American community, Bannon was talking tough about doing something that uplifted workers, especially white workers. But we can get some of that. Like, that's a conversation. If you wanted to have a conversation with anybody, you could have had one with Bannon about immigration. You honestly could have. Because I want you to remember one thing. Among the the things that Bannon said, he had a lot of conversations on his way out. He had a lot of conversations with the media, American prospects and interviews he wasn't supposed to be doing. And he talked about the protests in Charlottesville, and he went further than Trump. He called them like clowns. Trump didn't say that. Trump said there was violence on both sides. He called them like clowns. Now, I can't tell you whether or not this man's speaking from his heart because I've never seen, to my knowledge, politicians who I believe are speaking from their heart. And I'm not terribly concerned about a politician's heart. It don't matter to me. What matters to me is what you're willing to do on my behalf. And I think in terms of immigration and things like that, Bannon was willing to go there. In terms of bringing jobs here, he was willing to go there. That doesn't mean he's good for me. That doesn't mean he's good necessarily in net for the African-American community. But it means that maybe we could have gotten something. Now what you're going to have is Ivanka and Kushner and, and, and all the Republican establishment. It's almost as if the Republican establishment has now completely taken over the the, the, the the Trump administration. And so you have Trump on the one hand talking crazy and racist about, you know, about the Confederate, the Confederacy and it was violence on both sides. And then you just have the Republican Party. So who do you think is going to bring Trump to heel? It looks to me that the Republican Party is perfectly positioned to bring him down because there is no ideological fire thrower in the White House. And that was Bannon. He was the one keeping that going on. That was him doing that. That was him making those moves. That was him with those fights. And so the question now becomes, what is Bannon going to do? What is Bannon going to do now that we know he's going, is he going to go back to Breitbart and take on the Trump administration for doing what, doing what he thinks should have been done? Again, this is not any kind of apologia for Bannon. I don't, listen, everybody in that White House, 
I don't I don't I don't think those are good people. Um, and I don't think any of us would would say those are good people. Or any of those people had African Americans as part of our agenda. But what you want, if someone doesn't, if, it's almost like if you're in an army and you're in a battle. What I want for that other army that's opposing me, I want it to be unstable. And because of Bannon pushing the agenda that Trump ran on, that was unstable. And he was he was a force to be reckoned with within that White House. And so I think now that that's gone, I think that's problematic. I think it's problematic for a lot of reasons. I think the Trump administration is going to become much more efficient. They're going to start moving faster on policies that 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 that, that hurt rather than help. And they, they're going to lack some sort of imagination. And they're not going to have anybody to keep them honest. Look, you know, it's a lot of middle class. It's a, it was, We noticed, I seen another study that said it's wealthy Wealthy white people um, came out strong for Trump. I hear that. But there are working class people out there also who are going to be there. And, 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 and I think Bannon would be good at working with the white working class. And that would be our way to kind of needle our way in. Um, but I don't think any of that happens anymore. I think this White House becomes efficient and it does stuff that's not going to be beneficial to African-Americans. We already know how Trump feels about that. He loves those statues of the Confederacy. So I don't have really any high expectations, but I was hoping against hope that Bannon would stick around so that we would have some some chaos and we would continue that chaos. We've had almost, you know, we, we're going, we're going, like I said, we could have a year of this president just not doing anything. And now that Bannon's gone, I don't know if that's going to be the way it is anymore. And the Democratic Party isn't in any position has no moral high ground and is not in any position to challenge this president on anything. And they have come, they have shown themselves as total failures in their ability to see their own faults, to see the mistakes that they made in terms of selecting Hillary Clinton, the only politician probably who could have lost to Donald Trump. And they have not learned anything. So I have no faith that when Donald Trump and, 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 and everybody in his White House from Pence to Kushner comes with these, comes with these ideas, right? about what they think should happen. I don't think the Democrats have the gumption or the will to stand up against them. So, I mean, for me, um, Steve Bannon leaving is, is like not a good thing. So let me know what you think in the comments. I just want to come to you for a quick, 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 quick moment. Also, those of you who um, support the channel, please support the channel, support Breaking Brown. Donate if you can at DonateBrown.com or BreakingBrown.com. Um, we've also gotten hit um, the last two shows actually um have have been demonetized immediately so um i think they finally caught up with us so we'll talk soon i'll see you all monday and wednesday 9 p.m eastern standard times unless something else breaks look i finally got the camera together thanks army